In this session, we'll take a look at working with simple steps raster and simulated process color separations for screen printing. And my objective in this video is to lay a foundation of understanding relating to color and color separations and how they relate to screen printing. To get started here, I'd like to look at a couple of different processes for color separation. First thing I take a look at here is CMYK or process printing. Very often in screen printing, as soon as somebody sees a photographic image, they automatically think about CMYK or process printing. However, process printing has been developed for paper and other forms of printing. And it's constrained in the number of colors that it uses. For example, CMYK is always done with cyan, yellow, magenta, and black. You're constrained to three color components. Now, sometimes in screen printing, this is the only option available and it's the best route to take because if you have a graphic that has many different colors and you've got a limited number of colors on your press, CMYK is the option you're going to have to work with. But when we step out of CMYK into similarly a process based hue slash color components and black and white, then we've got a number of options available to us that are not available to us within the constraints of CMYK printing. And as we get towards the end of the session here, we'll see how all of this applies. Now here we have a color spectrum built out, and you can see that here, where we're going from zero red through all of the different color available back to zero red, which would be yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, and then back to red, and of course, black and white. Now any of these colors, you can buy them, many of them, as standard inks from your ink manufacturers such as the blue and the red and the yellow and the green, etc. Or you can mix custom colors to get some of these different colors if you want to use them to print. But in the simulated process printing environment, I guess you could say, or process of color separation and printing, very often we're dealing with images that really don't have cyan, yellow, and magenta. In them. For example, if you have a basketball, you'd have orange and black, perhaps, just two colors and you wouldn't want to have to make your orange by blending or mixing the CMYK. You'd get a much better, more vibrant print with orange and black. Let's take a look at understanding hue and color. Simple Steps Raster follows a very scientific process of looking at what is available in the visible spectrum of light or color, and we can see that here. And we can see the same color here in the rainbow. And believe it or not, all of the color that you see when you look at landscapes or you're looking around your house or you're in a movie is coming from these very basic colors, which is, you know, your cyan, yellow, and magenta, or here it's broken out into hues. Now with Simple Steps Raster, we follow a mathematical or logical division of the colors going from the three hues of CMYK to six hues, which would be red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta, and then to 12 which covers that plus the orange, the lime, the mint, the azure, the violet, and the rose. Now you notice here that as we look at this color wheel, we see many different colors. There's 360 different degrees or components of color. But any one of those components of color can be achieved through blending. For example, this color wheel has been built from a number of different objects that I color separate. And I'll go ahead and ungroup this here. And you can see here is the component for the cyan. And you can see the blend of the cyan going into the green. Now let me hit Control Z and we'll move that back in. Here we've got blue, not blue, excuse me, but azure. And here we've got the mint. Now when I hit Control Z and move the cyan back in here, look what happens to the color. It's all through blending. Now, this is the critical part of understanding and working with the simulated process printing process because it's all about blending colors and how you do it strategically. If I come over here and pull out, say, the rows, which you can see here, and then here would be my magenta. And then you can see the blends here. Now, if I hit Control Z and move those back, you can see what happens with the color. So we refer to these as color components, and all of your images are based on color components. And of course, they have black and white. Now, if we come down here and look at our components, we can see that these are actually set up identically to 
our Auto Steps tab, with the exception of the tints and shades and the grayscales in Simple Steps Raster. The first color components, yellow, cyan, magenta, which follow right here. I actually go to my advanced tools here and I'll go ahead and bring that up. Go ahead and close this and here you can see Simple Steps Raster. Yellow, cyan, and magenta, as you can see here. Six hues, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta, right down here. Now these are the mathematically correct or logical divisions of color based on the spectrum of color and how you'd want to work with it to reproduce it color images through the printing process. And then we've got 12 hues here. Red, orange, yellow, lime, green, mint, cyan, azure, blue, violet, magenta, and then rose. So these are natural divisions of the color. And I'll get into more of this in some other sessions. Now once we're working with that, we want to be aware of being able to add black and white. Here I have the same image, and I'll go ahead and remove the black and white. I'll just cut that. And we can see our pure hue or color components here all blended together. And then when I add black and white to that, now we can see even more colors. If you look over here, you can start to see magentas and browns. And over in here is flesh tones. And here we get into like more of the blues and navy blues. Some of your deeper, deeper aquas or turquoise over in here. Coming down to the magenta, you can see some deeper violet or more purple. So really understanding color is very simple once you understand how the color components work and the addition of black and white. And that's what we want to be aware of, color components in black and white. I've simplified that just a little bit over here on another color wheel. Here I've added some black to the pure color, and I'll go ahead and cut that. And you can see the pure color components here. And then when I go ahead and paste this back in, you can see the change. Same here with the white that I've added on the outside. I'll go ahead and cut that. There you can see the pure color components. When I paste that back in, you can see the changes in the color. Now following color, really this going darker would be your shades of the color components. And these would be your tints. So you've got color components and then we control that by adding black and white or a mix of black and white both. Then we get our tints and our shades and our neutrals and our mutes, etc. So you can see we break things down in Simple Steps Raster based on our simulated process printing working in 3, 6, or 12 hues, but our hues would be our color components. And here we can see a three color split right here. This is actually with the black, so you've got this for your black, but there's your cyan, yellow, and magenta. Now if we come down here to the six color split, we can see that we've divided it a little bit deeper. We've got a different split going here. But the thing that's very important to understand is that you're blending ramps or the gradients. And I'll hit Control Z here and we'll bring these back together. The way in which these colors blend together is the critical part of printing or screen printing with halftones so that you get accurate blending or an accurate simulation of continuous tone with the halftone printing process. And I'll go ahead and put those others back up here. And then down here, we've got 12 colors. I'll go ahead and move the black. And you can see here that we've got a very different division built out. And these are smaller, I guess you could say swaths or swatches or pulls of the blends or gradients of the color based on the 12 colors, as you can see there. Now what we want to be aware of is that as we're working with color components in black and white, we want to use these components strategically based on our understanding of the screen printing process. For example, here I've got a CMYK separation of just this simple swatch of color, but to print this as CMYK, I'd have to use four colors. I'd need magenta, yellow, cyan, and black the way the computers have set up CMYK. So if that was a photograph and I was going to print, I'd use all that color when that really wasn't necessary because of the simulated process. And the components, working in Simple Steps Raster, I could print just the blue and the black and still get a photographic image working with just two colors. For example, when we look at something like these crayons here, 
Many people would look at this and say, well, we need to print that as CMYK. And that's because that's the understanding that we have because of some of the information that's been going around relating to printing and paper and all of these things for so many years. But in reality, if we understand how to work with Simple Steps Raster, our color components in black and white, we can print this more effectively working with just the colors that we have from, say, the 12 color pulls as opposed to working with CMYK. Now here's the same image printed with CMYK. You've got cyan, yellow, magenta, and black. If we start to take this apart, we can see that a lot of our color is coming together or being generated by blends. Now strategically speaking, when we're screen printing, whenever we can avoid printing a color as a blend, we want to. Sometimes we don't have the option. The reason being is because you're going to get much more vibrant color if you're just printing that color as opposed to creating that color through a blend. And I'll hit Control-Z and we'll go back here. Now here we are out of the six colors, and we can see that we've got one, two, three, there's a magenta, four, five, six. So here we've got green, here we've got red, here we've got yellow, here we've got magenta, here we've got blue, here we've got black. So there's a lot of blending going on, which is not a bad thing. You can print with blends, but strategically thinking about it, you can print this with five colors coming out of the 12 color components in your separations. And here you've got your blue, your green, your orange, and your violet. And you'll get a very excellent photographic representation working from the colors that are here in the 12 hues. Now we'll go ahead and wrap here. We've laid down a foundation for understanding and working with the color components. We know that we want to be able to work with these components in black and white effectively and how they work. In our next session, we'll take a look at analyzing our images and strategically working with our color components in black and white for our color separations and our simulated process printing.